Today's episode is a walk down memory lane on past African Nations Cup competitions with former Indomitable Lions player and ex-captain of Kumbo Strikers Football Club, Sam Chair. He begins with the respect that Mbu Emil gave to football legend Mila Roger to receive the trophy at the 1988 African Nations Cup in Morocco. Mr. Sanchez, we are talking about the African Nations Cup competition. Which would you, some of them, since the inception, would you consider as have been very thrilling for you? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Njumbo. There are so many outcomes that uh, really impressed me, inspired me, and are still very fresh in my memory. Far back as 1984, as a two student in Chess Stiko, I followed the African Nations Cup through Radio Cameroon with excellent sports commentators like uh, Zachary Po and uh, and Sen Wan or uh, Ben Bengi. The, we relieved the, the the tournament as if it was live, as if as if we were in Cote d'Ivoire. And I can recall that memorable finals where everything was put on hold. People who had to attend their meetings, people who had to go to church, everybody was talking about that finals. And thank God we won against the Super Eagles by three goals to one. That was the very first half on that we won. And as a from two student, the trophy was paraded over all the national territory. I had the opportunity of uh, seeing the lion's car drove through, drove past the Tipo roundabout coming to Boya with Captain Trophy Omega holding the trophy high for our appreciation. That was the very first time, though it was not broadcasted live on TV, but I think it marked me very, very much. And when I was a kid back in school, they used to call me Dan Dagube. And Dan Dagube was part of that team. I saw him in Tipo roundabout. I was so inspired and it's motivated me more to train harder to become one player. In 1986, that was the very first time that the AFCON was broadcast live over CTV, by then it was CTV. And the memorable moments that caught my attention was, one of them was that Roger Miller equalizer against Morocco at the very last minute of the game. He took Badu Zaki off that and he equalized. We played a memorable finals against the Egyptian heroes and I can tell you that the detention that was in the house in which we were watching the TV, I was watching the TV in one military man's house in Bonaberry here in Boya. The tension that was amongst us, the viewers, and I, I can imagine what was happening back there in Cairo where the whole field was full with military people chanting to victory songs for the pharaohs. I was even afraid. I never wanted us to win because I imagine how we're going to leave that field with about 80,000 Egyptians shouting victory for their pharaohs. I would say fortunately or unfortunately enough, uh, Kanabik and Bidarantes uh, missed their penalty shoots after the, the 120 minutes of intense football that ended on his own time between the pharaohs and the lions. But as it turned God because I I was so fighting that you see we we well immediately we uploaded the Toman Pono safe on that penalty. I think it's Kala who first missed his own, then Bida came and missed his so they won the, the trophy. But two years on in 1988, by then television was common, by then you know we can even watch that in our sitting rooms. The lions went to Morocco, they saw and they conquered whites and the and the uh Mo Mo and the Moroccan own backyard. Because the the, 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 the the most memorable match in that nation's cup was the match we played against the the the, the, the Moroccans where Canabi had booted one defender and the twenty to twenty four meters drive that came in from Makanaki. Cyril Makanaki, the Lions midfielder, it gave us a victory that day. And once we won that game, I, I knew that we were going to win the trophy because the most dreaded team during that Nations Cup was Morocco with their maxman, Budebala Aziz, who was neutralized by a captain, 
or later on captain after he does team. By then, I think Aziz Budebala was playing for the Olympic Young in France, and he was one of the best players, if not the best, in Africa. We won the more camps with Budebala Aziz in the pitch. And against the Nigerians, it was just uh, window dressing for years as, as we won them against, uh, we won the one goal to zero, thanks to a Kunde Emmanuel penalty shoot. But uh, Cameroon won that match. Uh, but uh, Mosu, up to today, holds that he scored a goal, which a good goal that was refused. What's your opinion about that? I will not disagree with him, Mosu, because even that day, I myself am still baffled till the why that goal was disallowed. Because to me, it was a genuine goal. Maybe it was due to a, a, a technical or an error of appreciation from the central referee. And uh, when we were talking still about the competition in Morocco, how did you feel when Mbu Emiwu was captain of that team and captain on that day did not go to receive the trophy but gave Mira the opportunity to receive that trophy? Yes, that was an appreciation to all what Roger Mira has done to come on football. I think Mira has carried our football to international standards and most people in the world over know about Cameroon today thanks to Mozambia. It was a sign of respect, a sign of you know appreciation for somebody who has given in his all to serve the national colours. And I really appreciated what Mbu Emil did that day. And I think in 2017 Benjamin Mukando did the same when he beckoned on Kulu to come so that they leave the trophy one in Gabon together. I think that is a sign of respect. And when you look back at after 2000, which are the other Afghans that actually left or impressed you? Yes, from 2000, I, I can recall of the 2002 Mali expedition and the, the, the incident where Thomas Kono was manhandled by Malian security agents before the match against Mali. They alleged that Thomas Kono wanted to implant some great belief or some black magic in the field of play before, <laughs> before the match started. And it needed the intervention of the head of states of Mali to bring things to order. We were watching it live and in the course of the game, the Lions didn't speak much, but they responded with their legs and we gave the Malians 3-0. During the finals, it was so, so tension packed and Victory would have gone anyway because the Senegalese too, they had the Triangle Lion, they had a very formidable sword. And we were chanting songs of victory even before the, 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 the post-match penalties ended because we believed that come rain, come shine, the Lions were going to win. And thank God that's just what we did the, with the brilliant penalty stopped by Alun Bukhari. A large job's penalty stopped by Alim Bukar and, and the penalty of the captain and UCC. You're talking about uh, um, a Diouf who missed a penalty, uh, Alim stopped his penalty. And uh, 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 Diouf comes to Cameroon, he's on a tour, they're inspecting the various playgrounds. And in a small, you know, show up, he was going to remake a penalty against. Alium Buka, and he could not see score Alium. You watched it. What, 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 how, how did you feel when you saw him missing another penalty again? Yes, I watched it. I think that was more for fun than a reality. But sincerely, if Duke scored, he would have made vibes in social media. <laughs> so Alium, despite the fact that he was putting on a gandua, but he stopped Duke's penalty with his leg. So I, Alun Buka is one of the goalkeepers after Thomas Kono and uh, Bert Joseph Antoine that I have really appreciated because this country we are blessed with talented goalkeepers. If you look at Mangaja and Didier, who never had the chance for keep, of keeping for the Lions, he was an exceptional goalkeeper. He was playing alongside the Kono Daniel in Canon of Yaoundé. You can imagine such two talented goalkeepers playing for one club and Bekono is one of the goalkeepers that I think didn't have much 
in terms of his talent that he had. I mean, like professional exploits, because I was banking on him that he would be the next Thomas Kono and uh, Ben Joseph Antoine. So when we move from 2002, any other Afghans that left at least a mark that you can you feel like talking about? Yes, you know, after the 2000 and 2000 victories, our national team went through a series of uh, dismal performances in the Afghans until the 2017 African Nations Cup. To be honest, Mr. Njomo, the 2017 squad to me was the least talented in terms of individual players. But it was thanks to the, the technical expertise, <laughs> uh, let me say the football wizardry of Hugo Boss, the Belgian tactician, because we had a lot of average players compared to the other teams. But we triumphed and he believed in the players and the tactical disposition that he put in place. That is what made us to win the, the trophy against the Pharaohs of Egypt. And that victory was particularly, let me say, sweet because these Egyptian players have defeated us about three times in the Nations Cup Finals. And that day, you know, it was where we were, we were in the advent of the so-called Anglophone crisis. But everybody moved out of their houses to celebrate the victory on the streets from Bamenda to Edinao to Bundemba to Boya, Limbe, Kuma. I saw children playing a live band on the street where they were using <laughs> improvised materials on their mother's uh, pots, copper pots. They were playing, chanting, and you know, it was wonderful moving all around the streets of Boya to sing praises to the lions. And that was a very, very significant victory. And maybe we can learn from it that collectively we can do a lot of things because it's the collective spirit that triumphed in Gabon 2017 Nations Cup. It was not, we didn't have the individual talents of Boma, Mayer, Eto, Fui, Song, but we had an average team where the guys believed in the Lions fighting spirit and they made it through to the finals and came home with the trophy.